Now, this man, Benito Mussolini, wanted to be the emperor, the leader of a new Roman Empire. He was driven, charismatic and had a way with people, making many see him as a godlike figure. But during World War II, he lost his way and became Italy's most hated man. Why? Well, let's dive into his thrilling story and please feel free to take notes if you'd like. So, we need to go way back to 1936 in Italy, outside Palazzo Venezia, where something special happens. When a man in a black shirt and grey uniform steps onto a balcony, many people cheer loudly. But when he raises his hand, everyone becomes silent. This man tells them Italy has taken over a place called Abyssinia, which is now called Ethiopia. He says Italy now has a big empire that stands for peace and good things, and he asks if they are proud of it and they all say yes loudly. Now, in 14 years, this man has turned Italy into a well-oiled dictatorship, and in this crowning moment, he is the founder of the new empire. Taking a deeper dive, Benito Mussolini came from a small village called Pedapia in northern Italy. At first, he tried being a teacher like his mom, but soon realized he loved politics more. His dad believed strongly in socialism, and Mussolini became a big figure in the Italian Socialist Party because of his good speaking and writing. Now, by the age of 29, in 1912, he was the main editor of Italy's top socialist newspaper, Avanti. People often saw him dressed simply like a regular worker, with messy hair and a worn-out hat, but in fancy places in Milan, he dressed up in a suit and hat and enjoyed free drinks and coffee when others paid. However, he wasn't much fun at parties. He often mumbled, looked angry, and he got mad if someone disagreed with him. Many people did. By the way, did you know that Mussolini was targeted in many assassination attempts, but he always emerged unharmed? It almost seemed like fate was on his side. Mussolini, known for his confidence, once said, bullets might pass, but Mussolini remains. Now, Mussolini wanted to be like the old Roman leader, Augustus. After he became powerful, he did many things to make Italy better and to make people like him more. He stopped newspapers from writing bad things about him and said people can only support his party. He built many houses and roads, he also made sure Italy grew more wheat so they didn't have to buy from other countries, and he tried to give farmers more land to grow food, but there were still poor people in parts of Italy. He wanted more people in Italy, so he told families to have more kids. Families with many kids got less taxes, and mothers with seven kids got a special award from him. Mussolini was everywhere in the news. People saw pictures of him doing many things like running, swimming, and even playing music. He gave big speeches that many people listened to and liked. So Mussolini wanted Italy to be great again, like in old Roman times. He wanted to make Rome look like the old powerful city. And in a speech, he said that Rome will be amazing in five years. Now, Mussolini knew it was important to have the Pope's support in Italy, a country where the church was very influential. Even though Italians admired Mussolini, who got many fan letters, the Pope was deeply loved by the people. Even though Mussolini had previously dismissed religion and made fun of Catholic priests, he recognized the Pope's power and made a deal with Pope Pius XI in 1929. This deal accepted the Vatican's independence while making Catholicism the official religion of Italy. This made Mussolini's position stronger, as he not only got the church's support, but also added religious teaching in schools. The Pope publicly supported Mussolini and praised him for bringing Italy closer to God. Now, once he had established control in Italy, Mussolini set his sights on expanding his empire. He targeted Abyssinia in East Africa and in October 1935 announced a major invasion. The Italians, with their advanced weapons, quickly overwhelmed the Abyssinians who were armed with outdated weapons. After eight months, Mussolini declared victory. Now, during the Spanish Civil War in 1936, Mussolini was at his strongest. He sent 70,000 Italian soldiers to support General Francisco Franco. Germany also backed the fascists in Spain, leading Mussolini and Hitler to fight alongside each other. Hitler, one of the few leaders to recognize Italy's conquest of Abyssinia, admired Mussolini greatly, calling him an unparalleled statement. However, Mussolini didn't reciprocate this admiration. In private, he called Hitler a tinny plumber, a broken record, and a mad little clown. He also criticized Hitler's ideology as completely racist. But by November 1936, Mussolini's tune had changed. 
He announced a Rome-Berlin alliance, suggesting it was the peace axis for Europe. In September of the following year, Mussolini visited Germany. The Nazis went all out to impress him, organizing massive parades and rallies. Mussolini was amazed by the 800,000 Germans who braved the rain to hear him speak. He praised the bond between the fascists and the Nazis and claimed that Italy and Germany were the world's truest democracies. So Mussolini made a deal with the Nazis after he saw how powerful they were. In 1938, he started laws against Jewish people, like Germany had. In 1939, Mussolini and Hitler signed the Steel Pact where they promised to help each other if they got into fights with other countries. This decision was bad for Italy. Many people in Italy were worried about being friends with Germany because they thought Hitler's talks about war would become real. They were right. When Germany attacked Poland in 1939, World War II started. Even though Mussolini promised to support Germany, he waited a bit before joining the war. In 1940, after seeing Germany win many battles, Mussolini thought Italy should join to get some benefits. Even when his general said the Italian army wasn't ready, Mussolini said the war would end soon and Italy needed to be part of it. In June 1940, he ordered his army to attack France. So Mussolini's leadership in the war failed. He commanded big attacks in the Mediterranean area, but they all turned into failures. In Egypt, Italians were defeated by a smaller British force in Greece, only with Germany's help did they avoid complete embarrassment. Loss after loss occurred and Mussolini's popularity decreased. People in Italy were hungry and there was a shortage of everything from medicine to clothes. Soldiers at the front lines had to fight with poor equipment, no maps, bad organization and no real cause to believe it. Many of them surrendered without even fighting. Now, Mussolini never thought he was the reason for these problems. He blamed his officer and made big changes in the ranks. He had big mood changes. One day he promised victory to the Italians and the next day criticized them, even calling them a race of sheep and an emotional and unworthy people. During his captivity, Mussolini saw Italy declare a ceasefire and align with the Allies in 1943. The Germans, aiming to make him the leader of a northwest Italian buffer state, searched urgently for him. Heinrich Himmler even sought an astrologer's help. In September 1943, they successfully rescued Mussolini. However, instead of regaining his leadership in the Southern Republic, he became a mere German puppet. He did retaliate against his son-in-law, Gerard Succiano, who had a part in his downfall by having him executed. From Giornano by Lake Garda, with his lover Chiara Petacci, Mussolini decreed severe punishments against Italians opposing the Germans. By early 1945, as Italy was being freed, Mussolini tried escaping with Germans but was captured. Found hidden in a truck, he surrendered and was later executed with Clara. His body, alongside with Clara's, was displayed in Milan's Piazzale Loreto. Angered crowds defaced it. The final humiliation came when both bodies were hung upside down, showcasing the fallen dictator's disgrace in the city where he once rose to power. 